Well, you know, nobody really fought Dave for the inside. He just drove to the inside lane and nobody fought him for it. I don't understand that. There was nobody contesting him for it. What you don't want to do is give Dave Villock the inside lane at least without a fight. The one minute gun is fired. 50 seconds now to the start of this 2002 Budweiser Columbia Cup. The sun is at uh, an angle where the water is glistening. It's a beautiful picture and up the back stretch, they are very slow. The Budweiser is uh, on the inside and the Elam is tucked in lane two and the Elam leading them up. They're all down on speed except the uh, other boats trailing in behind will set them as they round the turn. But it's Budweiser on the inside, the Elam in lane two and they're still very slow chip with 25 seconds to the start. If somebody gets a flying start, they'll probably go right by them. Budweiser is slow. Elam picks it up a little bit. Ken Muscatel is in as the wild card. He will trail the field around. Budweiser, lane one. Elam, lane two. Jackson Sports Bar, lane three. Lumar's in four. Alberto's in five. And on the far outside, well, Lumar's on the far outside. Middle of the race course is Trent West, who's gotten restarted. They come for the start now. It is a flying start as the gun goes for the start of the 2002 Columbia Cup. Waiting on the review. It is six rooster tails across the crowd going crazy. And it is Trent West. It's a legal start. It's Trent West leading up to the first turn first with boat speed on the inside of him. It's Mark Tate on the outside of the Lumar. The Budweiser is on the inside. We'll see as they go around the turn. The Bud and the Elam around the turn. And Elam leads the race up the back stretch. Budweiser running in second. Trent West back to third. It is Elam by about half a rooster tail up the back stretch with Budweiser on the inside, Chip. I think we are in for one heck of a boat race because you got the Budweiser inside. He can stay with the Elam, even though the Elam's maybe a faster boat, but we're going to have five down and dirty laps here. We are. We've waited for this all year. The Elam on the outside is one from there all day long coming back in the end, but it's the Elam on the outside. Budweiser on the inside. The wor two world record setters in this qualifying laps earlier this weekend. They are almost coming down even. The Elam with a slight lead. The Budweiser in rougher water on the inside and lower on RPMs. They come down. The Budweiser gets a little light. They complete lap number one. The Elam 150.589. The Budweiser 149. As they come down, it's still Elam by a boat like they are screaming to the Blue Bridge turn. Odul's eye in the sky has him. Nate Brown hooking it nice and tight, trying to keep Budweiser inside, but he loses him a little bit. Budweiser comes off first, but Elam has acceleration. Up the back stretch, it's Budweiser, and Elam is in the spray now. Milwaukee got him on the turn. I think Elam made a big mistake by not slowing down and keeping Dave Milwaukee tight to the buoys. He took a lot of boat speed in there, and they drew out. That Dave gave a, Dave a clear lane on that inside, and that could be the nail in the coffin. Elam's still very much on it. Nate's been fast all day and all weekend. They go to the upper turn. It's Budweiser in lane one with the lead. The Elam on the outside does have acceleration though and great RPMs. They come around nearly even up and the Budweiser cannot bear out. They are nearly identical as they come off the turn. But the Budweiser looks like it'll lead at the end of lap two. You talked about five dirty laps, Jim. We're going to see the end of lap two and they are still side by side as they come by and complete lap number two. And the Budweiser and Elam are side by side. They could reach out and touch each other. The Odoo's up, Budweiser went up. The Budweiser went up and over, it looked like, but still going. Turn to the infield. It is the Elam. He cut the course. It's Elam's race chip. The Budweiser got loose. He nearly went over. It's Dave Brown's race. I'm sure his crew will tell him. How is Dave Bill walk upright? It's amazing. I think it's hard to see. I saw the Dave, the Dave boat, the Budweiser boat. I saw both sides of the deck. It was absolutely vertical, but he got it down. The problem is he missed about three of the buoys, so he's going to be disqualified, but we have to ask ourselves, was he pushed inside the course, or did he just lose control? Look to me, Chip, that he had room. It's just very tough. They're still dragging it out, but the Elam may back off now that it's his race, or he may keep his foot in it for this crowd that is stuck around through the delays. They come down to complete lap number three. We had a beautiful picture of it in the eye in the sky, and the Budweiser's got a one-lap penalty on missing the buoys, of course, and he will have to go around again. He looks like your leader, but it's the Elam. Does Nate know, Chip? Shouldn't he back off? You know, he must not know. These radios aren't the most reliable things in the world, so he may not be able to hear, but, you know, he's still driving the boat very hard, but now he's got to know, and he's just going to let him go. I tell you what, that was a great race to see two drivers driving that hard with two boats that are that well prepared, and you got to hand it to Dave. He gave it all he had. You know, that can happen on the inside lane. It's hard to drive in there. The boat took a bounce on him, got away from him, but I, he gave it all he had. Nate is cleaning up the world record book. He just set another world record in lap three in competition, 152.583, breaking the world record of San Diego of a year ago. Budweiser also ran fast with his three buoys. It is Nate Brown, your leader. Let's check the rest of the field, Chip. 
Nate Brown is your leader. Jackson Sports Bar and Mike Hansen running in second place, and they are well back. Behind him, we'll check the rest of the field, but Nate will come down along with the Budweiser. But it's Nate Brown to complete lap number four. Slowed it down a little to 146. He must know. Chip, unbelievable recovery for Dave Billwalk in the Bud that he's upright and still racing hard. And I really don't know why Dave's pushing the boat. Actually, I don't know why either one of them are pushing the boat as hard as they are. But I tell you what, Dave Billwalk is lucky to get that boat down. One half a lap to go for the Elam Plus and Nate Brown and he will pick up his second victory of the year and, and chips it chip in many ways a, a job saving gig for Nate Brown he raced hard all day aggressively stayed pretty clean all day long and you know there's a lot of pressure on those top boats Nate Brown coming through today there seems to be a pattern with Nate he has a horrible race and he goes out and wins then he has a horrible race and he comes out and wins but he drove a great race today he really did here is Nate Brown off the upper turn, the Elam Plus. He has slowed down considerably now. The crowd knows it along the beach. They know what is happening. The Budweiser goes through the start-finish line, but no checkered flag. Nate Brown will come by the start-finish line. He will get a checkered flag, and the Elam Plus and Nate Brown win the 2002 Budweiser Columbia Cup on the Columbia River. The Budweiser will have to go around and finish another lap. Elam coming by the beach, and he nearly hit the outer course marker and had to turn it tight as he goes by trying to give the fans a show. But as we pick up the rest of the field, it is going to be Mark Tate in the Trend West. You know, they, they battled all day long, but now Elam slow on speed. We'll go down and talk to the winner. So there it is. The Elam Plus is victorious here. 2002 Columbia Cup here in Tri-Cities, Washington. We will go to the pits with the celebration momentarily. But while the Elam crossed the start-finish line, let's take a look on the other side of the river. What happened with Ken Muscatel and the Silver Dollar Casino going up over landing. And you see the boat break in half. We'll have Ken Muscatel. He is okay. We will have him at the dock as well with the celebration of the Elam. Take a look at the broken boat. Nate, oh my how, how did it feel? Yeah, what, what kind of a boat race was that? The best of my life, let me tell you. What happened to Dave? All of a sudden, you guys threw these things in that corner like I've never seen. All of a sudden, Dave was up on his side. Did you see what happened? Yeah, well, of course I saw what happened. <laughs> I had the best seat in the house, Chip. Um, the first lap before that, I didn't do a very good job in the corner. I cut my foot to the floor, and as you say, I didn't settle the boat down before the corner. It just kind of flew out. The next corner, I knew. I mean, I could pull him coming off the corner but the end of the chute and everything. So I knew that if I had a chance to get him, I had to hold him down tight, hold the corner all the way through, as you know, and kind of light bulb it, and I was doing that. I think he grabbed a little too much fin and spit it out. How horribly rough was it in there? Unbelievable, Chip, let me tell you. And like any boat race, but, you know, the Elstrom job, Eric Elstrom, right behind you, you got to get this guy in there. Yeah! This guy is the man. Eric is without a doubt, the best, youngest, most energetic guy who wants to race. We need a whole lot more owners on, like this man. guy. You guys have won a number of races. Well, how does this compare to the races you've won in the past? Uh, this one was uh, this was tough. Uh, uh, well, tough? Uh, but great. Uh, God, this is nobody uh, knows this... it yet, but I'm going to qualify him in Seattle. He's oh, going to yeah. take some laps yeah. in this thing. Uh, we got to do this some more. Okay. A bow race like I haven't seen in a lot of years. Great job by Nate Brown. Dr. Ken Muscatel is in good shape and good spirits. We'll be talking to him momentarily. His boat is being towed in as it has been sawed apparently in half. Uh, also, we want to say that Mitch Evans uh, was not able to compete today in the brand new vacationville.com, but they will be in Seattle. Let's go down to the pit area. Ken, I have never seen destruction in a boat like that, but yet you look so intact. Well, you know, it's like the portrait of Dorian Gray. The boat took all the punishment. I'm happy to be in one piece. It hung a long, long time. The boat launched, what's what happened, it launched, I was probably only going 165, 170 miles an hour and thought I was going to get down and then I heard um, Jay, my radio guy, say, oh, oh no, and of course I felt my, my sentiments exactly. I'm in third place, so when the boat started hanging and hanging and hanging, I, um, and I, when I knew it was going over, I, I grabbed my mask with my hand and I held it to my face and over I went. How lucky of a guy do you feel right now? I'm, I'm a pretty lucky guy. Um, I'm here. I'm smiling. That's as good lucky as you can get. And I got my kid waiting for me in Seattle. He's a dear friend of mine, and there's about 100,000 people on the beach that are very happy to see Ken smiling right now. Don't do that anymore, bud. <laughs> it ain't worth it. 